Hi, this is Jack Lofton, and this is Critical Materials Corner. And today I'm going to address uh, geopolitical issues with China and not really the U.S., not just the U.S. What, I, what I've learned in the last few weeks is that the, the Chinese dominance of the rare earth space has set off alarm bells not just in Washington, but also in the EU and, and, and especially in Canada. It's interesting. In, in America, and I'm in the U.S., everyone thinks only of America. We never think of anything else. Uh, they, they call our president the leader of the free world. That clearly is not true. He might be the leader of the hegemon. That means the first among equals in, in the world. But he's certainly not the leader of the free world. Now, what's this got to do with anything is this. I see the security of supply of, of critical materials becoming a regional issue in this world. And the interesting thing is North America is now becoming two regions, not one, the United States and Canada. And the United States is dawdling and having meetings and talking and talking about the supply chain and trying to understand it. And all that's wonderful. And we've got actually a producing mine in California. And we have a processing company in Utah that's produced the first rare earth concentrate made in the U.S. in, in a generation. But Canada is, is quite frankly going ahead faster than we are. Canada is developing several rare earth deposits into production, and, can, and a Canadian Crown Corporation, and for you Americans, that means a state-owned company, in Saskatchewan, of all places, is building a, the first full-scale rare earth separation plant using solvent extraction built in, on this continent that's going to work in about 25 to 50 years, no joke. And that is not being built to supply the United States. It's, it's being built to process Canadian material and uh, from a mine in Saskatchewan. And on top of that, an Australian company has committed to begin mining this year, Vital Metals, in, in, the, in the Northwest Territories. And that material will probably also go to the Saskatchewan Research Council complex for, for engineering, for extraction and concentration. And then it's going to go to Europe to Norway to be to uh, to be separated, and then to England for making metals, and back to Germany for making uh, magnets. That's the plan of the Australian company. Now, to me, the I've always looked upon the English speaking world as the ABC powers: America, Britain, and Canada. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to change the A to Australia for the rare earth space because I think that we're now resolving into the United States, the ABC powers, and the European Union as, as regional hegemons in, in the rare earth security of supply space. So this, this world's going to get very interesting, and this, this industry is going to get very interesting in the next few years. But watch this. The United States is not leading this, not at all. Europe is way ahead of us, and my Canadian friends tell me we want to license metal making, alloy making, and even magnet making technology from our European friends. I said, "What about America?" And their answer was, "Nobody in America is doing any of those things. What are we supposed to license?" The, the European companies are actively in those spaces, make, producing products and, and making money. So, folks, stay tuned because. I'm going to I'm going to have to broaden my my discussions now because this is not just going to be about rare earths. Regionalism is going to affect all critical materials, and you know what? Um, we're not just the United States is not just competing with China anymore. It's it's going to be uh, our friends, the other hegemons in the world, and I can't predict the future. In conclusion, I, I want to emphasize that China is not going away. China is going to be the hegemon of rare earths for as long as, as I think we can predict. 
we're going to have other sources of rare earths developed and total rare earth supply chains developed in one of one or all of three places, the United States, Canada, or Europe. I don't know which one, but I've got plenty of popcorn, so I'm, I'm going to be watching and enjoying this and reporting to you on what I see and what I know. Thanks.